Shout the Lord, Hallelujah! And so, Father in heaven, we say thank you. Thank you for such a time as this. Thank you because your word says you make all things beautiful in your own time. Thank you for those of us who survived the revolution in this nation. Thank you for those of us who are alive to tell the story. Thank you for the generation that came after the struggle. And thank you, Lord, for the light that has come to this nation. We thank you, and we thank you, and we thank you. Once again, thank you for the unity in the body of Christ. Thank you for togetherness. And let your name be glorified. Thank you for His Excellency that has come to listen and to participate in a national obligation. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Liberia, sweet love we prophesy to you. You will rise, you will shine, you will prosper in Africa. I said, please be comfortably seated. Liberia is far above principalities and even the rulers of darkness of this world, they are all under. Liberia is above in Jesus' name. We stand on every existing protocol as established previously by previous speakers. But most of all this morning, we would like to say a special welcome to His Excellency, our dear President, His Excellency Joseph Mubaka, and our daddy First Lady, our mother of this nation, a God-fearing woman. We also like to say a big welcome to a recognition to the speaker of the 54th legislature. Is it 55th? 55th, I'm sorry. The 55th legislature, his honorable Fanati Kupfer and his dear wife, you are most welcome. And all, I thought you were clapping for our speaker. But you want me to speak for you? Our lawmakers and members of the judicial repression, our darling leaders of the church in Liberia, I thought you said better amen. amen. I thought you were clapping for our church leaders. Our leaders of the network, the congregations represented, you are blessed. Coming up here was not my idea, it was God's instruction. I know a national event of this magnitude should have been held in a sanctuary that would take multiply thousands. But the Lord said we should return to the mountain. Because every time the nation comes to the mountain, covenant is renewed. Every time we come to the altars, covenants are redeemed. And on this mountain, there are 15 altars for the 15 counties of Liberia. So you can represent Liberia any other place but where every county is represented. Shall we please open God's word this morning? Second Chronicles chapter 15, we're looking at the pathway to a better Liberia. Pathway to a better Liberia. Good portion of what I'm going to say this morning came out of a book 
I was privileged to author, and this book came out of our independence speech. 2020, I was privileged to be the Independence Day Orator, National Orator, and I spoke from the title, Standing Together in Time of Pandemic. And the message was transcribed and added to and put in form of a book. So it's a book that I believe history will judge us right for seeing the right things at the right time and who we hear, we hear. And who we know here, we know here. And Jesus will be glorified. So pathway to a better Liberia, our scripture, anchor scripture for this 72 hours national initiative. By way of correction, we've been on this national initiative for over 17 years. Every fast and prayer we come together and twice a year, mainly we take up time here for 48 hours, 24 hours. But when we go 72 hours, it means there are a lot of pressing issues. Besides, this is one network that meets every week. We have men on this mountain, men in our headquarters location, praying for this nation, men and women who sacrifice their time every week to do tarry, all night prayers for this nation. Something we've done for over 16, going to 17 years now, and we're not prepared to stop. We're going further. I said we are going further. Do you agree with me? And the anchor scripture says in Job 14, there's hope for a tree if it be cut down. Through the scent of water, it will sprout again. Do you believe Liberia can rise again? Yes. Liberia has been cut, has been butchered and battled in many ways. But we believe that together as the church, when we come together and seek His face, God will heal Liberia and God will give us a new nation in Jesus' mighty name. So 2 Chronicles chapter 15 is where I want to take my bearing for this specific thanksgiving. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and I'm going to read a few verses and I will do a brief exhortation. I'm looking at my time, so I look to this holiday. Chapter 15, I read from verse 3. Now for a long season, Israel, Liberia, have been without the truth of God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble, somebody say we are in trouble. They turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him. He was fond of them. And in those days, there was, no, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in during the 90s. And great vexation was upon the inhabitants of the countries. And the nation was destroyed of nation. NPFL, LPC, Yulimoke, Yulimoje, the nation destroyed the nation. Black berry, white berry. But be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asab heard these words and the prophecy of Oda, the prophet, he put he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renew the altar of the law. Somebody say renew the altar. Renew. So that's what we've come to do today, to renew the altar of the law. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon and for and to them that fell and out of Israel for the abundance and when they saw that the Lord his God was with him, somebody say God is here. So they gathered themselves together as we are today at Jerusalem and in the third month and in the fifteenth day of the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. Our emphasis here is verse 12. And they enter into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts and with all their souls. And whosoever will not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. There's power in togetherness. So we look at the pathway to a better nation. If you are watching online, your nation could be better than ours. But I tell you the truth, if you apply these keys, 
you will experience the presence of God sweeping through the length and breadth of your nation. So our nation has been in troubles in time past. Thank God for the past regimes. Thank God for the past leaders. Thank God for the church in this nation, but we need to do more. Tell them we need to do more. So there are factors I believe are responsible to become building blocks for a better nation. And what are these factors? On the pathway to a better nation. Number one is the purity factor. Someone say purity factor. <laughs> Israel had been without the truth God and without the truth teaching priests and without law. And there was no God. So no one had a fear of God. So the nation began to eat up herself. It began to destroy herself. Every time we embrace idolatry, every time we embrace other religions or other gods apart from the truth and the living God, we are signing on for degradation. We are signing on for destruction. We are signing on for backwardness. The problems of Liberia may be enormous, but I believe if we seek God first, if we seek the truth and the living God first, if those of us who are preachers will preach the truth from the mountaintop and live the truth, the nation will turn to God. So the purity factor, because Proverbs chapter 14 and 34 says, Righteousness will exalt a nation, but sin is a reproach to all people. So a nation that has no fear of God, Proverbs 1, 23 says, Turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour out my spirit. So God will release his spirit of excellence upon the people of a nation that have come together to call on the truth and the living God. So the purity factor, purity factor, clean hands and clean heart. If you come to church, come with clean hands and clean heart. If you come to leadership, come with clean hands and clean hearts. The purity factor. Second factor to be considered is what I call the purpose factor. Why did God create this nation? What is our purpose of existence? Because the scripture says in Proverbs 29 and verse 18, that where there is no vision, the people are stripped of honor. The people will operate without restraint. So when purpose is not known, abuse will be inevitable. What is our purpose of existence? We are one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But why are we not experiencing what we ought to experience as we should? It's because we have left the purpose for which God made us educated. We have left the purpose for which God gave us freedom. This country was founded on Christian principles. I stand to be connected. Declaration of Independence was signed in a church. The American Colonization Society was a church based or NGO that was after free slaves and resettling free slaves. So if God has been at our foundation, why did we abandon God along the way? Our purpose of existence was to bring light to this dark continent and the light will, she will spread all over the world. But now we are over 200 years old and then we are still asking our neighbors for help. Instead of being a help to other nations, we are asking other nations to come and take out the darkness from here because we have forgotten the purpose for which the nation was created. In Acts chapter 17 verse 26, scripture says, Before any nation was formed, God had a purpose. God had a plan. He formed all nations. So our founding fathers were only obeying God. He founded the nations. He created the boundaries. According to Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, Call on me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things you don't know. So we need to go back and ask. Thank God for the rescue vision. Thank God for the proper vision. Thank God for other visions that have come and gone. But if we don't have a God vision for this nation, if we don't have God's direction, if God is not our shepherd directing us on his purpose and his plans for this nation, we may fail. Number three factor to consider is the power factor. So where's the power? He said, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Psalm 63 and verse 1 says, Oh God, thou my God, early will I seek thee. My soul is thirsty for you. My flesh is longing for you in a dark and thirsty land where no, I want to see your power. 
Why are foreigners controlling our economy? Because we lack empowerment. We don't have the economic power. Make all the policies you can, you don't have the means. It is empowerment that will influence the people. We need to have the, the, the economic power in order for us to influence our followers. That's why a church could single-handedly take over this kind of project. Why? Because when the church is in power, the nation will be blessed. So we need to empower ourselves, not only receiving spiritual power through fasting and prayer, we need to empower our youth, empower our young people. We need power. Power does not lie only with the lawmakers, it lies with the people. But if our people are not developed, if our people have been robbed and spoiled, if our people have been overlooked and underestimated, if our people have not been recognized, how can they be empowered? We are impoverished today because we lack empowerment. We lack empowerment. So knowledge is power. What are we giving? Every successful government, successful government in time past have had budgets for education. But why are we still undereducated? Why are we still undereducated? Why education now is a mess? Why is it that teachers are still receiving 3,000 librarian dollars as salary in some institutions? Our people are not in power. So corruption will take over. Poverty takes over. Most of what we see is a bread and butter problem because we lack empowerment. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, he said, And the Lord has given thee power to get wealth. So wealth is not evil. The church needs to be wealthy. The citizens need to be wealthy. And if our laws are passed that empower the citizens, the citizens will in turn be a blessing to their nation. Somebody said to me, Reverend, if you didn't come back to Liberia, if you didn't invest all these millions of dollars into properties, into building churches and building schools, we don't know what would have become of this nation. That's why I lost my peace. I lost my, my, my happiness. And God told me return. And I returned some 19 years ago, and I have not turned my back. I'm not ready to turn my back. Amen. So we need a power factor. Tell you a power factor. We need a purity factor, the purpose factor. We need a power factor. Also, we all need to understand the people's factor. Someone said the people factor. Amen. We sit down and buy more government every day, but we have our part to play. And Liberia must be a better place. In time past, I've said it and I continue to say, I don't buy more leaders, but I tell them the right things at the right time. Scripture says we should pray for them. But apart from that, Scripture says we should speak the truth. And have no fear of favoritism. Yes. So we need the people factor. Tell me the people factor. Hosea yes. 4 and 6 say, My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Yes. Not only that, the people in, 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 in Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6, scripture says, So build we the wall. We can't build Liberia, we can't rescue Liberia. If the people have the mind to sleep, if the people have the mind to bear, if the people have the mind to be dependent, we need to leave the dependency syndrome. No government, no nation will be built with NGO budgets. Don't be happy when World Bank is giving us money. Don't be happy when we are begging International Monetary Fund to give us things. No, I said this, Liberia can be better off without foreign donors. Provided Liberians have the mind to work. It's anger job. Anger job. Government should not be the only one producing jobs. No, we need to create jobs. If I were to do statistics, and how many persons here are on this church payroll, you'll be surprised. Including the one sitting beside me. How many persons have, have you know, members of this the, the, the ministry going to the school or you are a teacher here one way or another, you are a pastor in one of the villages somewhere, they hear many. Why? We are here to empower our people. So there is a people factor. If the people do not fear God, if the people do not want to work, they don't want to work, if the people don't want to serve God, the Bible says in Genesis 11 and 6 that the people are one. And this we they have imagined to do. Nothing shall be restrained from them. So if we are united in our purpose, in our cause, and we are ready to take responsibility, everything is not on the government. The Bible says the church will with the one is the one that will lead the government and the government shall be upon our shoulders 
So how the government will be on our shoulder when we carry plate and baggy every Tom, Dick and Harry for everything? So the people have their own problem. Because even if you elect angels and you replace these current leaders with angels, this country won't change. Because the people are not prepared for change. They are not willing to walk. They are not willing 5 a.m. to wake up and go look for a job to do. They want government to give them job. I stand to be corrected. I am one of the few that were appointed recently. And I beg his excellency, I just said, please don't give me a job. I told you before, don't give me a job. And please, I don't want a job. What I do for this nation is higher than any other job. In the past, in the present, in the future, what I do for this nation is a sacrifice. Nobody can pay me. Yeah. So the people factor, we have our own problem. Nehemiah says, so we build the walls. We join the walls together because the people had a mind to walk. Nehemiah took 52 days and he revolutionized a whole nation because the people had a mind to walk. He had a vision, but the people had a mind. The people had a mind. Now we need to possess the mindset. The mindset that we are a successful people. We are a blessed people. We are not an impoverished people. We are a great people. We are a best setter. We are a leaders among nations. Apart from the people factor, there is a prayer factor. Tell me a prayer factor. <laughs> he said, you always talk about prayer. Mark that type prayer. If my people, some of the people, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. I pray, I pray, Lord Jesus, and some, and I pray, and I pray, I pray, I pray, Lord Jesus, and some, it is well with my soul. Now the Bible says the people assembled together and then they asked help from the Lord. They were in trouble, they realized they had the problem. The leaders didn't have the problem, they had the problem. When you want the leaders to perform magic overnight, no, magic won't last us. What will last a lasting legacy is if we are ready to volunteer. If we are ready to lay down our lives, lay down our substance. A church leader here today, one of our fathers in the face said to me, he said, Reverend Thomas, the amount of money to buy this land, you would have carried this thing abroad, buy a property, you and your wife and children be going for holiday. You would enjoy yourself in other places. Another one said to me, I want to see your wife. I said, oh, she travels. He said, because a woman that will sit there and lie to do all this for God, that woman too must fear God. Somebody said, the people factor. The prayer factor. Somebody the prayer factor. Men ought always to pray and not to fail. And that's why this space, this, 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 this geographical location has been set aside for prayer for over a decade. You wouldn't get into know it now because we asked you to come. But this place has been here for over a decade plus. And all we've been doing here is prayer. It's prayer. Prayer for Liberia. Prayer for the nation. Many things that happen in this country change from right here, but you won't know. <laughs> Somebody say prayer. Somebody shout prayer. Somebody shout prayer. Okay, we need a prayer factor now. We've been doing that 72 hours. We've been doing that over 16 years. Then we also look from this passage the preschool factor. Somebody say preschool. There was a disrupted preschool. The Bible said there was no teaching priests. All the priests were there lining their pockets. All the priests were there eating the offering and sleeping with the offerings. All the priests. <laughs> Is that anything the offerings? <laughs> if you don't get the offering, then the offerings. <laughs> the priests were there having fun time and the people were suffering. And God said, No, I will judge these people. I will scatter them. So we need a restoration of the priesthood. And that's what is happening here. These men, some of them have not seen their wives and children for weeks. Because when I call them midnight, they are here. I call them 2 a.m., they are here. Only one time when you find they have a platform that they are vowed to look at every day. So it's every day. And if I place something on that platform and you don't answer the call, you will answer another time. <laughs> Somebody says, so yeah, two of us. <laughs> Including the one that they have, a white pass my own, my name. <laughs> Somebody said, the priest who? Second Chronicles 20 and 20 said, Believe in the Lord your God, you shall be accepted. Believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. If the priest who is out of order, 
the nation will be out of order. So elect whoever you want next election. And you don't make sure that you put your fat pastor feet to the fire. You don't ask your pastor what happened to the offering of last year. What happened to the budget of last year. If you don't ask the pastor why they church barely can change. Why we keep giving, giving, we can't see anything. If you don't hold the peace into accountability, something will not happen good in the nation. The priests must be held in contempt if they don't perform their job. So 2 Chronicles 23 says, we should believe in the Lord our God, we should understand, believe in the prophet so you will prosper. The nation that has no prophet is doomed. The prophet has, the nation has no regard for prophets also doomed. Apart from the priest factor, we have the place factor. Someone say the place. The Bible says they assembled together at the altar of God. That what brought us here. This place is not for any other thing but for God. This is not my house. This is not my property. This is for God. And that's why we said, cut the ribbon. And before he leave from here today, he'll cut the ribbon for another facility that will be dedicated to presidential prayers. Yeah. Now, from here, you can do national prayer. Oh God, help my district. Oh God, help my, help my Lord God. Oh God, help my, help my family. Oh, I grew up here. Help my crew out here. Help my family out here. Oh, I from Red Blue. Yeah, me and the speaker were from the same place. Help my Red Blue out here. But by the time it comes to presidential matters, past, present, and future, there is a hall. And we will go there, we will be there. Some of them will be there. Seven days a week, we will be there. And by so doing, the president will do what God wants him to do. Amen. Because the scripture says we should pray for those in authority that will live a quiet and a peaceable life. So if we don't pray for the president, he cannot walk. The cabinet will fail with our prayers in case we don't know. So there is a place factor. This is the place. Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10, God said, I will yet appoint a place for my people Israel. And the sons of wickedness will not afflict them. And they will not be removed anymore. So Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10 said, I will appoint a place for my people. Apart from the place factor, there is a policy factor. Tell me policy factor. <laughs> policy makers must make the right policy. We must not put square peg in round holes. <laughs> Policy factor. So what is the policy? policy? Leaders are placed there by God and by the will of God so that they make policies that will favor the ordinary people. The policy factor. It could be political, it could be how you call it, but the policy factor. So what is the policy factor? Policy makers must fear God as they are making policies. We can some concessions over. And forget the future of our children. Get a 99 year contract to a bunch of thieves. And get a 99 year 65 year contract to a bunch of thieves. Liberia is where she is today because of bad policies. Bad policies. Bad policies. The policy makers will make, will make policy in the interest of the people. The ordinary masses, not the asses. The use of as asses instead of being the masses. Now let me tell you the truth. I'm about closing. Two minutes I'll be out of here. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, the scripture says, War unto thee, O land, when your king is a child. When he is in the morning for drunkenness and not for strength. So if we have policy makers that are children, policy makers that play ludo and play checker and forget about the people's business, we are in trouble. I said we are in trouble. But God deliver us. Now policies must be in the interest of God, in the interest of the people. So what unto thee, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 16, what unto thee when that when the king is a child and uh, he eats in the morning for drunkenness and not for strength. But he said, blessed are that old land, Liberia and nation, when the king is a noble, the son of noble. And make policies that will favor the people. Amen. And the last but not the least, may the Lord help us. I say, may the Lord help us. We need constant prophetic impartation. Ezekiel 22 30, he said, I sought for a man that will stand in a gap. You can call everybody men of God, but not everybody have the prophetic mantle. You need people who will, who will speak on behalf of God and the nation will follow that direction. I stand to declare to you today that Liberia will be a better place. Yeah.
if the prophets play their role and the policies make us make their role and Liberians look for a place like this to assemble periodically and call on the God of heaven, a place set aside purposely for God and we put, make our prayers and the people change their mindset and focus on how they can be productive without government support, without government help. His Excellency today was the Vice President in those days and we were privileged to create a role linking District 2 with District 12, Johnsonville with Danosville. And we spent thousands of United States dollars and worked more than two months to make it ready. And he came and we dedicated the role to the government and we are not stopped. I said we are not stopped. If you ask our community dwellers, quite recently we intervened again. You drove from the main road here. And the time is coming on this ground, you will drive on Kota from over there here. You drive to this place on Kota Road. Because everywhere you just go, light goes. And when agro development comes, we build that road and you drove all to come here. Without government help at the point in time? Why? Because we have our country at heart. We need as a people to love Liberia. If we don't love Liberia, this country is doomed. If we speak only evil about Liberia and we don't correct ourselves, if we shift the blame on people in authority and we don't take our own portion. Now the message today for everybody, someone say everybody. everybody. Those in authority took their own. And you that are in authority, you take in your own. And you that plan to be in authority also take your own. Because we're here. Y'all come and meet us here. Christ to your feet. Oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you for making me a Liberian. I repent today for my evil mindset, for my negative approach. I repent today and surrender to you. Lead me, oh Lord, and lead our nation. Lift your voice and pray that prayer. Father, I pray. In Jesus' most precious name, I will ask two of my church leaders to please hold me with their hands. As I make prophetic declaration, please join your hands. Those of you behind your church leaders, join your hands. Together we decree and declare prophetically, Liberia will rise again. Liberia is a better place. Liberia is not under any curse. We decree and declare righteousness will exalt this nation. God has given all leaders who fear him, they will walk in the fear of God. This, this nation will not go back to her past. This nation will not go back to her past. This nation will go forward. The time is coming, it's very soon, our children will call this nation blessed. Our children, children will inherit a better economy. We decree and declare anyone robbing Liberia, God will punish them. Anyone having the intention to spoil Liberia, God will spoil them. Anyone blessing Liberia is blessed. Anyone helping Liberia is help. Anyone creating opportunity for ordinary Liberians, they are blessed. They are blessed. Our natural resources will not only end up in the hands of foreigners. We will control our economy. We will control our economy. We will make policies that will favor the kingdom of God. Favor the people of God. Liberia is blessed. Our president will live his mandate. His wife will live and fulfill her mandate. Our speaker will live and fulfill his mandate. VP will live and fulfill his mandate. We decree Liberia will not know break in with democracy any longer. This democratic process will continue. The church will remain as salt and light in this nation. The church will remain salt and light to this nation. The church will remain, church will remain salt and light to this nation. Liberia is a beacon of light. There is hope for Liberia. There is hope for Liberia. There is hope for Liberia. I see new trees rising. I see new plants growing. I see new roads being paved. I see new institutions. I see new technical institutions. Academic institutions. Religious institutions. Our problem as a nation can be solved in the church. The church will play her role. And government will play her role. In Jesus most precious name. It is done. It is done. And it is done.
Genesis chapter 12 from verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Hallelujah. The purpose for which God blesses us is so that we will be a blessing to God, his kingdom, and humanity. Hallelujah. I'd like us to please package our offering as we honor the Lord with our offering. Hallelujah. Shall we write, please? And lay our offerings unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. That which you have given us, we have come back to give to you. We decree our offerings are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Please be comfortable, sister. Well.
Farmer spoke in tongues and prophesied that the current president today will be president. I was in ninth grade about to go and be book of Washington Institute. And all throughout we have been watching, but the Lord has shown that his word when spoken must come to pass. This was not something that I heard. This was a prophecy given in my presence in one as a little child. And when God brings such prophecy and fulfillment, it is our responsibility to pray for God and make sure that He can do that which the Lord has called Him to do. I want you to just remain seated as we pray for God. Father, we are grateful that what you said has come to pass. Today we pray for the president of this country. We believe that he is a gift 
that you have given the Liberian people. I pray today that no weapon fashioned against him will ever prosper. I pray that you will bestow upon him the wisdom of Solomon. For we know how difficult we are as a people. Oh, Father, I pray, O oh God, the gifts of intelligence, the gifts of knowledge, God will be inspired upon his life. And even those that work along with him in government, Father, oh God, will do that which you want them to do. I pray especially for all ministers in government. I pray, O oh God, those who are exercising the function of government that have been given to them or been assigned to them. Father, I pray that they will lead their people in realizing the goals and aspirations, the dreams and the vision of this leadership. Father, I pray, O oh God, that every arm of government, O oh God, will be corruption free. Amen. Father, we know that corruption has destroyed this nation. We know, God, that your people have been destroyed because of what corruption has done. For I pray for the chief executive that he will stay on God's wall fearless but to do wrong. We pray for him. Father, we pray for the speaker and all members of the House of Representatives, the President Pro Tem and all senators we pray, God, even as they enact in, in laws, those laws will be laws that will bless our nation and bless the people. Father, I pray, O oh God, and then do your means to enact laws. Father, we be denied and rejected. Amen. Father, we pray that the glory of the Lord will be in that house. Amen. And that house will be the people's house. Amen. Bless them, Lord. Lord. We thank you for what we see happening in these few days. That justice is beginning to take place. We pray, Lord, that your name will be praised and be glorified. Father, we pray for the judicial and the chief justice and all associate justices and judges and all members of the judiciary. I pray, oh God, where there is no equity, where there is no justice, the people are prone to suffer. I pray that justice will reign from the mountain top to the valleys, from the Atlantic Ocean to the north of Lofa, to the east and west of this country. I pray that justice will reign in this. People will go to court and they will get justice. People will go to court and they will get justice. We come against every plan and powers of hell that will tend to interfere with the exercise and the functionality of justice in this country. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the three branches of government. We pray for the Liberian people that we will be patient. The Lord will help us to be patient. We pray for unity amongst the three branches of government. The Lord, they should know that they are working for the people. Bless your people now. Thank you for today. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. This we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Just uh, tune in. You're watching live from Sagittarius Mansion. Thank you, Reverend, for that powerful Online prayer platform. for our government. Hallelujah. We have brief remarks, but before that, I want to introduce to you a few books. The first one is Standing Together in Time of Pandemic, that is written by Reverend Tatodonga. It talks about factors that we can our nation togetherness. You read and you have insight. Then I have two books here written by. Festa Bola, Apostle Festa Bola. The first one is destroying altars of degeneration. Most of the times we pray and we misdirect our prayers because we don't have insight. This book discusses altars in this country, most especially from Mama Point all the way to Kanghe. 
And this one talks about prayer. It will help to strengthen our prayer life in Jesus' mighty name. These are prayer points we compile for this nation. The prayer we are, the prayers we are praying here, do not stop here. As we go to our various churches, our homes, and our places of work, we need to use them daily on the of our nation and we have a better country. The Lord give us understanding. The first person to come to make a mark on behalf of the body of Christ is Bishop J. Maxwell Sexton from World Center Bar Church. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for all of you that have come, including the Excellency and his wife, the speaker, and all the representatives and senators are here. Today, I want to believe that the word God has said concerning the prayer is fulfilling. The things that God showed to, for this nation with him praying, and we see it coming to pass now. Sometime last year, but this time I went to meet the, our excellency at this house. Like God gave me a word for him. And I talked to my pastor to me. And I said to him in his office, I said, God said, I should say to you that our former president has only one time. But after that, you want to take over. But the only thing you should do, you should encourage the coalition to come around you. Everyone you should be around when you become the person, the next person. And we pray we left. And today we can see him among us. We are grateful to God for that. Yeah. He's humble. You know, right after that, I was saying this to my church. I said, this is the word that God gave me for Liberia. Somebody was in my service and wrote against me. Man God. I was invited everywhere. What are you talking? And I said to them, this is what God said. If I love, let for the time. And today we are seeing the manifestation of what God has said. We want to thank God for all of you for coming today. We want to thank God for revealing that God. Simeon Domba. You know, he brought me here some time ago. I saw this guy. I said, Wow, we have men here. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to take this time to call on um, Honorable Councillor J. Fonati Kufa, Speaker of the National Institute. National Justice League Talk. Thank you very much, please. Have a seat. Our President, His Excellency, Mr. Mwaka, our Mother of the Nation, our dear First Lady, our fellow, fellow colleagues from the First Branch of Government, the Dean and members of the Italian the President, other officials of the Government, members of the Clergy, very much for inviting me. When I came in, we were taken to a holding room to wait for the president, and I was giving a prayer card. And I wrote just one word on it that seemed to be permeating here today, which is wisdom. And I was forced to confront that because yesterday in my office, I had 11 lawmakers. And sometimes when they are talking, you think they are fighting. They are all screaming at you behind your desk. So I got ready to do a session. When the last one finally left my office, rather than go through the door to leave the office, I went to the inner office. And that was my prayer. God gave me wisdom. Because here's the problem. You have 11 advices screaming at you. You're going to take one. One person will come and say, the speaker is very smart. Ten others are going to say, that's because you know anything. <laughs> so it's the wisdom to discern 
that they applied for the applies in the interest of that. Because in this country we have too many interests and too few friends. The wisdom to be able as national leaders when we dialogue, even if we disagree, to do it in a respectful manner, to recognize institutions and persons who God has blessed us with, with those institutions. For us to recognize that. The wisdom to be able to see that Liberia is blessed for resources, but why the wisdom of God, it continues to look like this. So that we make the right decisions we want to do our minimum resources to educate our children, our minimum resources to build a viable healthcare system, second to none. That's the wisdom I pray for. And that's the wisdom I put on this call. Because at the end of the day, this is a season. For me, I have only 72 of them to deal with. Liberia is a hard place to govern. As, as, as God said, Moses said, the children of Israel, the Lord did not choose you because you are a beautiful people, or you are a kind people, or you do what you are doing, but you are a stiff left people. And this is what we have. But I have 72 to deal with. What about just saying, you know, God, and I have 5 million? <laughs> so we pray for that vision. That's all we pray for. We thank you for inviting us. We continue to pray. And we continue to work hard for this country. Every time I leave the office, I ask one question, I don't know, people have not called why I ask that question. I'm uh, giving the capital to that. About 8, 8.30 at night, I ask the spirit, is the president still in the office? My answer usually is, yes, Chief, he's there. They are being staged for about an hour, the president hasn't come down yet. I say, well, he will leave who will go out and win. Thank you very much for inviting us. We will all continue to bless this country. Thank you, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Hallelujah! Mm. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus for our powerful remarks by our speaker. Thank you very much, sir. We are grateful. Amen. This one, I will turn it over to the National Chairman of the Green Party. The Reverend Luther. Yeah, thank you. And I want to go. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Dumba, for blessing our hearts on this natural day of prayer. Excuse me, just more. Liberians need to embrace a new mindset for continuous development. The 1847 mindset can work for 2024. Progressive Liberia. The protocol has asked me to play this part because we are in the house of God. So thank you to the protocol for allowing me. I'm not sure I'm going to return this power to you. I enjoy introducing my president. Mr. Speaker, our First Lady, Madam Kofa, Distinguished members of the 55th legislature and members of our cabinet, our religious leaders here present, fellow citizens, librarians everywhere, it is my pleasing duty and honor to introduce to you the man God has kept for a long time, for a moment like this. Yeah. From the beautiful city of Wusunga, in Lofa County. He made his way through his education. And today the Lord has made him the father of the land. That person is Master Nobera. The indisputable, strong, rescue one. Ladies and gentlemen, with a rousing welcome, let's stand on our feet as we welcome the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Joseph Yemai Baka.
Thank you for your time and thank all of you. Please have your seats. Just sit down. Executive representative of the House, uh, members of the House, and honorable church leaders, the choir. Yeah. Uh, for all the years around this country, this is the first time I've seen this day so honored. Who just doesn't talk, but he walks the talk. He is a faithful man, and he is determined. Our country, indeed, is on the way to recover. Yesterday, we had a occasion to celebrate the restoration of 123 young people who have been on drugs, uh, been given put through some orientation. And we went to celebrate the coming back and we called and the risk young people and I've been at risk. And yesterday it was a joyous day to see those young people testifying who have been on drug for so long. And we went there the international community and all the persons who are there to this location. I don't think this is just happening. It is one God wants to. Yes. Don't know, you are quite right. God loves this country. One Father Brown from the Catholic Church. Came here some years ago and he was a member of the Rotary Club. He probably was our secretary. And he said to me, on April 11, 1980, they met in London to take a decision as to which country they should select as the home of Don Bosco. At the end of that meeting, they resolved that she be Liberia because Liberia was peaceful and so forth. On April 12th, as they were going to the airport to board a plane, it was announced that Liberia had a coup. <laughs> but still, the gospel came here. So they had decided that God had a thing. One of the things that frightened me in the Bible is when it says that Samson realized that God was no longer with him. If that doesn't frighten you, when God is no longer with you, you should understand that. That God is still with this country. I believe it. And this is why we are here. The prayers, the sacrifices, the fasting, all have kept us where we are, in spite of all that we are. So I want to thank Dharma and all of his 
Very good. All of you who are here for believing in God and letting people know that God is real. And in fact, as a matter of fact, it has never occurred to me before. I have come at this time to believe that God is God, no matter what we do. We might have a vision, we might have a thing, but God is still in control and He is the one who is there. I believe in that. I want to thank all of you for being here. The, the country is getting there not together because, not because he's here. Uh, politics is politics. Everybody was say, oh, the speaker, hey, the two of them had different agenda. Say, the speaker has assured me that we want to work together. Yes. 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 He has demonstrated it. This is the chance God has given us to be in this country. And that's what he will do. So whether they know it, the uh, Facebook, I'm not on Facebook. I don't even listen to it. There are two stations I listen to it. Here and here and here and the BBC. Because some people don't even know the trouble this country is in. They don't know it, they don't even understand it, and they shouldn't. But we know. And that's why God has us to redeem this country. I usually tell people that sometimes you forget so quickly. I tell some people you forget the dream before you even wake up. And I can assure you that all the signs are pointing that Liberia is going to move, that Liberia is going to be redeemed, and that these ch the children of this country are going to be blessed. And God is going to restore His presence in this land. And I want to say that this is necessary, honest messages. Messages that bring us together and reassure us. Some of the things that are so frightening. I have gone to other country. They export rice. You can export water. But even to the extent that the sand of your country is being dug and exported. Can you imagine that? Can you mind in that? You know what it means to take the soil of your country and your sin and carry it somewhere else? Those things we cannot allow to happen. And so we need your prayers. We need prayers. We are not afraid because we believe God has given us this practice to do what we're doing. We pray for all of our legislators, the judicial, the one that showed you that this Liberia, with all your prayers, you can be with him, it will prosper, and it will benefit from these resources. Can you imagine, what do we have to try in? One, the Duca was our pride. Where is the Duca? Hotel Africa, where is it? Mano River, gone. What do you show? Tottenham Bird, Veteran T, LMC, Yekepa, gone man. Then the children now are on drugs. What do you have to do? We need prayers. We need prayers. And I know God is on the moon. And God is going to restore this country. I want to thank you all. Continue to pray for us. Continue to believe that the God who created this country is still in control. 
and we are not here to be president. We are here to rescue and to bring this country back to the presence of God for the blessing of this land to benefit our people. I want to thank you all. God bless us all. As we remain standing, I will ask those of us who have our expectation card, our prayer cards, please lift them above your head. I will ask that the act of testimony be brought forth. Okay, it's already on the altar, it's already it's there in position. Please, if you don't have the prayer card, then lift up your hands, the ushers will give it to you. It's not your personal expectation, but expectation for Liberia. What way do you want to see Liberia? And I'm sure you heard the word. By the power of God in the next six months, next one year, next five years, as Christ tarries the next 10 years. This is the beginning of a new regime. Where do you want this regime to be at the at or end? And what do you expect for Liberia? And what legacy you expect to be left? I believe as we decree together in prayers on this mountain, heaven will hear. The heavens are open. God has released angels to take our request up there. So together, I will ask that we please lift them up. I have His Excellencies. <laughs> I will still take it for you, sir. Please, mine should be in my Bible. Please give me my Bible. Lift them above your head. In Jesus' precious name. And so, Father in heaven, we say thank you. Thank you once again because for one, first of all, supplications and prayers. Intercession should be made for those in authority that we will live a quiet and a peaceable life. Your word says we should be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayers, supplications, with thanksgiving. We've come on this national day of fast and prayer. We have fasted and we pray. Your Lord says, surely there is an end. Our expectations will not be cut off. You say, write a vision, make a plan. That the run that read it. Let the angels of God read the vision. Let the angels of God read our desire. You say, whatsoever thing we desire, when we pray, we pray. When we pray, we should believe we have received them and we have them. So we decree our expectations are presented to you. Let them become manifestation. Liberia remain one nation indivisible. Liberia remain a peaceful nation. We have no more coup d'etat in this nation. No more sudden death of our young people in the streets. No more loss of lives, innocent lives, public and private lives. No more will the enemy use foreigners to invade our economy. No more will we do mocky what baboon draw. Lord, let this nation be blessed. As you have blessed us, let the citizens enjoy the blessings. Let the light of revival continuously shine. Every expectation become a manifestation in Jesus' precious name. It is done. It is done and it is done. So I will collect those from this person at the platform. Firstly, take the request. And I will personally, in the act of testimony, because all shots will take from you also, please. If whatever you wrote in is from your heart, and God will give you the desires of your heart. Please bring the act of testimony. We drop them in the act. Please collect them. Choir, you can give us the instructions as we collect the act of the testimony. The prayer cards. Collect them and bring them to the altar. Amen. Please, you may be seated. We have attempts 16, 17, and 18. And this is how it goes. We'll do the full of thanks, and that will be done by Reverend Dr. Wilmot B. Hodges, Shiloh Public Ministry, and here the Land Ministry of Prayer Network. And that will be followed by our benediction for the cutting of the ribbon. This is how it goes. Yes, and I say we'll lead 
a team of people to the hall. And because we are many, everybody will not go. This is how it goes. Members of the 55th legislature, our platform gets spread behind us. And the president and his team will be going there to come the red one and then that is done. Thank you, sir. So, vote of thanks. And you can watch it live uh, online. The executive mansion. We also want to online platform. Stand the platform of Putuko myself. Obviously, we recognize our president is wife in the house in SNLC. President of our Zimbabwe worker, we called the suicide and our speakers and everyone here. We thank God because for you to leave your busy schedule and come this far is a sacrifice. It is a seat. We say God will reward you wonderful in the name of Jesus. You could have been somewhere resting. We also want to thank all the faithful librarians that have left their homes 24 hours up to 72 hours. We pray, pray day and night. No food, but because of this country, we say God will reward you. We say God will reward you. I also want to tell God, thank you for God's servant that God gave this vision that tirelessly we say thank you because straight in you. We say God bless you, and we know that you have become a better place continually with your sacrifices. You are blessed. Yes, indeed. And, uh for the online platform of the executive mansion, Madam Kula Fofana, Presidential Press Secretary, Joe Praise Blackie. the Lord. Standing on all the existing protocol, I say your excellency, good afternoon, and our dearest mother in the land. My name is Pastor Victor Lisa. Privileged to stand here as the National Pastor of Leaders Chapel Liberia and presenting the Shakti to the Court to Liberia. I want to say a big time to see this day. Remember, last year prior to the election, tension was building up and God served the Bishop of Liberia to give us permission to pray for 21 midnight from 10 30 p.m. to 1 a.m. We're going around the town, various junctions, painting the blood and praying. Peace in Liberia. There shall be no bloodshed. And there shall be peaceful uh, transition from democratic to democratic elections. So we give God all the glory. And uh, several times we have also we had a celebrity. We have 72 hours prayers up here, likewise, and uh, we thank God that God brought that to pass, despite all the challenges the enemy posed. They say it is forever in the name of Jesus. One more time, I pray a greeting from the Shogun He says his greeting is deeply to you in Jesus' mighty name. Please, may we pray. Benediction. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We give you praise for the privilege of life, for all you have done, for your excellency, this cabinet, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for the success of the peaceful, democratic, and democratic elections. We thank you for your good hand upon your servant. Thank you for bringing a Joseph in our time. Take all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Surely Liberia has entered a season of peace. The glory has been restored. Thank you, precious Heavenly Father. This Liberia will see a glorious future. Men that are running from Liberia shall run back to Liberia. Liberia shall be a place where people will look for visa to come to. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your servant, Reverend Dr. 
Lead this prayer mountain. Stand by him, bless him on every side in the name of Jesus. We commit the remaining procedures to holy hands. And the next point and would be the cutting of in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is the protocol. The let us make up and we are still here and we understand that we'll be cutting over the ribbon Wait. Let you speak talk first, then follow by the clergy, then the president. Secretary to His Excellency the President, the head of his team, Joe Blackie. Joe Blackie is a part of his team. Lovet Fambule, Joe Ama, and a full crew.
you need to keep your camera on when you see Hitchcock in the box. His Excellency, flanked by the First Lady, come to this point. Where you do the cutting of the ribbon to this facility. This is one car will do the cutting of the ribbon to this facility. Presidential prayers, obviously. When intercessors from all the nations will come, we will spend their time. We have dormitories on there, we have washrooms on there, we have toilets on there, we have offices on tap for intercessors, purposely for prayer. So the body of Christ will unite, use this facility and this entire place. But this is for presidential prayer. And it is honor the most prepared and dedicated for this purpose. For presidential prayers, as you heard, and, uh, and the ribbon. Sit down, cut. His Excellency, the President. President Walker. Cut the ribbon. There goes it. Cut the ribbon. Don't, don't wait. Proceed. 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 Just go straight. Go. This is a call to This is exclusively. Exclusively for prayers for the presidency. It's being briefed. From this point, His Excellency will be winding down on this uh, particular uh, platform alongside Mrs. Wakai. And this team has been out here on the mount. This uh, national prayer mount. 
As we wrap it up, we'd like to say thanks a million for viewing from wherever you are. And thanks a million for viewing. This is the Executive Mansion online platform. Kula Fufana, Madam Fufana, is the uh, Presidential Press Secretary. Yes, indeed, uh, Lovett Fambule is there. Joe Blackie is also here, part of this team. Ama Blackie, as as uh, Joe Ama, I'm sorry. And for the entire crew, Janitha Sa, and the rest. My name is Emmanuel Kipart. We say thanks a million for viewing as His Excellency rolls off the cuff right here on this uh, prayer mount. Thanks for viewing and a pleasant goodbye.